Hey guys, so it's the time of the week again. What are the top stocks that you've requested via social media and via our Facebook Live session? Check this out with the heart, the goal, and intent to help you trade, to help you win, and to help you pick stocks that will help you win, not just now, but creating a craft for you that will develop your skill to help you win in the stock market for a very, very, very long time. So check this video out, and I hope you start winning this week. But also just a quick plug uh, for you guys in different cities. Uh, the next batch of stock market seminars will be number one in Qatar this February. Then this March, I'll be doing Stock Smarts Manila. In April, I'll be doing Stock Smarts Cebu. Then in May, I'll be doing Stock Smarts Singapore. In July, I will be in CDO and Iloilo. Then in August, I will be in Hong Kong. Then November, Taiwan. And by the way, I'll be doing an event with Sean C this February 13. So if you want to know what's a better investment, business or stocks, uh, you can join us there. And I'll be in Japan this April 13 with Radel Chongson. Okay, <laughs> here we go. It's Sunday again. As you all know, I try to make uh, the most of my time doing Facebook Live. Also on a Sunday because a lot of you uh, requested to do it also on a Sunday just before the week opens and you know we did a lot of Facebook live sessions also last week not just from uh, stocks by request but I've been giving you updates also on the market uh, I've been giving you updates on where I am so at least you have formal context of uh, how it is how am I doing and with the goal of also helping you uh, to trade and to win in the market so uh, maybe I'll, let me give you I'll just take a few minutes first and let's wait for people to join us so we can start uh, this this session already and uh, for those who are I don't know just joining this Facebook live for the first time uh, this is the top stocks that have been requested via social media for those who want the stocks to be analyzed comment your name the stock and if, if either you are planning to buy it or you're planning to I don't know uh, planning to sell already or is it a time for you to actually hold on to your positions as well so i'll just wait for a few seconds for you guys to join us and just comment them below all right so and we now have people online john casa salute to you marco tan Gemma Bear pugon good evening uh kung kanente from dubai hello marvin kagadas ej eagle top fan uh good evening sir marv from davao city arnel agustin from espana Lolita Riloda, uh, good evening from, from you also, who's from Taguig. Uh, Rebecca Tangan, hello to you. Asking, she's asking for MPI, ISM, IMI. Uh, Rebecca, are you planning to buy, sell? Uh, I want to add more context into this. No? Uh, John V. Dumanig from Cebu, hello. Uh, Michael Aquino asking for ISM. JC Spads asking for to go. Kenneth Tina from Taguig. Jean Teha Terrado. Hi, Sir Marvin. Great week ahead. Globe, SM Prime, SDR. JB Tolentino, Lope Revilla, um, Martin Caps. Hello to all of you. Good evening. Good evening to all of you. Hope you guys are uh, doing amazing as we start the week as well. So, uh, I, I, I I want to start first based on those who sent the, the request you know, via YouTube, Facebook, uh, and also Twitter, Instagram, and also in uh, my web in my website marvinbirmo.com so there were a, there were a couple of stocks that got requested first and then we'll try to start with that then from there we will progress with the other stocks all right so the first stock that i'd like you to uh, i'd like to talk about first is bloom um this is amazing no because bloom has been uh, really progressing and they've been really uh crushing the markets and it's it's been pushing and doing very 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 well as you've all known as you've all seen, you know, I've made videos about Bloom that I said in the previous videos that there's a resistance at 10.20, 10.25. And if you look at the narrative also here, you know, I'll just try to remove this first so that you can uh, If you try to look at the narrative, uh, the stock already uh, last Friday broke out from the resistance. So that's something very, very good, very, very strong. And that's something that if you are a trader, it's something worth watching uh, because of the breakout from uh, this level. Uh, you now have a stronger bias for 
uh, the bullishness of the stock to push up. So why am I saying this? Because of the breakout from 10.2, and as long as the stock stays above 10.2, the amazing thing about that is this: uh, you are a position trader. The stock just has fully reversed. I'm again, if you're a position trader and you're owning Bloom, the stock has fully reversed and has moved from bearish to bullish. So now, as long as the stock will stay above 10.2, the narrative is it will still continue to push up. It's now in an uptrend. A lot of the price and momentum indicators and oscillators are showing that the stock is trending up. A lot of them are also showing that there's still no sign of reversal. For those who are positioned, congratulations, you are making money. And that's how, that's what makes the stock market really, 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 really amazing because you you get to have a shot, you get to have a framework to make money off of it now uh because if you're a quick trader because of the breakout from 10.2 the, the prevailing theme that you need to figure out is as long as it stays above 10.2 you can expect the stock to go higher if it does not hold 10.2 the stock could probably from this perspective no it could retrace downward here you have to remember this is a critical junction for it but if it stays above 10.2 i really believe this the next area where it could have possibly challenge is the stock could progress up and the next target price is at 15 pesos per share if followed our previous videos the breakout from from the eighth level should it go to around 12 will already give you around 40 percent if you bought at the support here at around seven you're now up or you'll be up around 56 percent should it happen and should it progress further next i'd like to talk about uh vita also which had a good amount of volume now if you're noticing the characteristics of vita vita is doing this it's now starting to develop uh, lower uh, lower highs already so which is one distinctive uh, note for stocks that are moving and pushing towards an uptrend so there it's a very 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 good sign for uh, vita uh, because of the movement upward if i try to draw a shorter uh, range here for those who are quick traders you will see this that the stock hey look at this so it just broke out from the resistance of around two pesos per share because of the breakout from the resistance of two pesos per share you can't expect the stock to push higher where will it push uh, because of the breakout of two from two the stock will hit this level the next target price is around 2.3 pesos per share uh for the short term so possible narrative possible target price possible spot uh where Vita will go, and it's a 17% uh, upside should the breakout from two hold. So please remember, narrative is it has to stay above two, but not just stay above two, it has to bounce off of those levels for it to go to around 2.8, uh, to around probably 2. Point, uh, sorry, 2.28 or 2.3 pesos per share. Uh, for those who bought at the breakout, please make sure if two does not hold, you must sell and you must get away from the stock. Right, so uh, just a couple of more greetings for those who are joining us just now. So for those that you not patience, na medyo mabilis yung pag uh, load also ng screen. No, Bell Pena asking for MBTI, VLL, MPI, ICT. Guys, please comment name where you're from and also uh, are you planning to buy the stock or sell the stock so I can give you a narrative for it. Mark Bellon, a valued commenter, is asking for RLC. Precious Narvaez asking for ICT. Carlos Albano, uh, more power to you asking for UBP. Or RLC7 CHP. Mark Bellon asking for SEC. Mark Bellon also is asking for URC. Edward Arco, Portugo, STR, and uh, Petron. But let's proceed first with the current stocks and then we'll, we'll continue with the others that you guys are po that you guys are posting. So Ayala Land. Ayala Land now, uh, if you notice, no, it's as of the close last Friday, I pegged a support level somewhere at the 44.5 level. As of the close last Friday, it dipped lower. So the play here for Monday is you have to watch the 44.5 level. Why? Because if the 44.5 level will not hold, there's a possibility for Ayala Land to drop and fall to around probably 42.6, 42.7. But should it go back? I think and I believe that it will challenge and it will try to hook and hit up the 47 uh, peso level. That's for the short term. So again, 44.5. Failure to hold 44.5, the stock can go to 43. 
break out from 44.5, the stock will go to around 47 pesos per share for the short term. So uh, from a position trading standpoint, though, you are a position trader. And for those who've attended our sessions, you know the narrative and you know our context for position trading. Uh, as long as it's still in this uh, bullish trend, you don't have to sell. For quick traders, though, please make sure if 44.5, it doesn't go back to that level, you must be out of the stock because a clearer and bigger and larger correction may possibly happen. All right. Next, uh, this one I'm excited about because you know me, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of consumption stocks. I love consumption stocks. Because at the end of the day, our economy is confirming it. At the end of the day, our economy is just really Filipinos just love to spend it. So they've been hit and battered last year. But you have to remember, if the company is good, the company is resilient, and they find ways to earn. Stock prices always follow companies that have the possibility to earn more and have the potential to earn more. And this stock has been battered down, but not anymore. The stock has started uh, its progression. No? Stock has started its progression and is reversing. I'm talking about pizza. I'm talking about shakies. Uh, if you look at this chart from a position trading standpoint, from the after it hitting its peak last uh, early early 2018, the stock has been in a massive, 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 massive downtrend. But something happened last Thursday. The stock started to break out of uh, the very, very, very strong resistance, which is around the 12.5 level. I repeat, the stock started to break the resistance at the 12.5 level. Meaning this, because of the breakout from the 12.5 level, you are a quick trader. No sell signal yet. Again, the stock just broke out of the 12.5 level. And if you are a quick trader, there's no, uh, there's no sell signal yet for the stock. You are a position trader. It's an opportune time to start coming in because the stock is bullish. Because the stock now has reversed. And again, the goal of this, every time I, I speak here, it's been very consistent. Your goal should be to avoid stocks that are falling. Never try to bottom pick because it's hard to know when the stock has hit the bottom. Your goal is, hey, it stopped falling. It started to reverse. It's now headed up. It's not the cheapest area to come in. But as long as it's reversing, you know that buyers are there. And if buyers are there, that's the best time for you to start coming in. The condition for shakies, the condition for pizza, the stock will continue to reverse upward as long as 12.4, 12.5 levels will hold. If it holds, guess what? Pizza will continue to progress. If it holds, the breakout will continue to progress. If you're a quick trader, no need to sell yet. If you're a position trader, I hope that you are adding to your position and as long as the narrative of 12.5, 12.6 will hold. And I believe this, I believe that the stock, because of that, will possibly progress further. The next target price that you can, you can project here will be this. Uh, next target price for Shakey's will be around 13.7, breakout for 13.7. The stock will go to 14.9 pesos per share. So Shakey's target price 13.7, breakout from 13.7, target price will be 14.9, failure to break out from those levels sell 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 take profits you're a position trader as long as it stays above 12.5 12.6 the upward trend will just continue all right so uh next stocks that i'd like to analyze are uh, you all know about the hygiene incident that there was a large default uh, it was one of the largest defaults in recent history in the philippines and a lot of the banks got hit rcbc being the largest uh getting uh, getting hit the most it's been uh, it has the largest exposure, but of course, Metro Bank is also there. BPI is also there. Uh, they also had exposure to the stock. That's why you have to remember you know, uh, the price movement is just a reflection of people's sentiment uh, toward the stock. If people are scared, stocks will possibly go down. And here's the thing. That's what happened uh, last Friday. As you've all seen, the large red black candle here uh, brought about by the sell down. And it should not surprise you why. One of the things that I always tell people is traps like that should not surprise you. Number one is because of this. See this? It failed to break out of 84.5. Our goal is not to guess what will happen next. Not my goal. Not my goal to forecast. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not someone who is guessing where the market is headed. 
I'm just here to base it on what I see today. That's why I can trade. That's why I can watch the markets. And that's why I can do it. Even if my schedule is busy or it's free, it's just the same strategy. Everything I need to know is found in the charts. Everything I need to know is found in the technicals. And what I do know is it failed to break out of 84.6. But not just that. For those who have been following our set, our Stock Smart seminar series, look at the narrative for the moving average. It also failed to hold on that. And then look at also the MACD. The MACD was already showing us that, hey, it's now time to sell, that there was already a change in direction for the stock. So movements like that, news like that, it should it doesn't surprise me. Why? Because everything you need to know is found in the charts. And with that also, with that sell down, I believe the next possible support for the stock is around the 75 peso level. So uh, the 75 peso level will be defended. Let's see if it's strong enough this Monday, if there's a significant level of buying that could cause the stock to go up. So now the thing about Metro Bank is this. Close to 75. Point three, it fails to hold 75. I believe the stock could reverse even lower and could go to as low as 70. But if it holds, if it bounces off 75, then it has a shot to go back to 81 and as high as around 85 pesos per share for the short term. So there. Now let me let me look at the stocks that you've uh, requested. No, I don't know where to start. There's so many people. You have BDO, MRC, and now and. She's from Australia and Jay uh, Degwai asking for RCBC and uh, BPI. Let's look at RCBC, you know, because RCBC also was one of the had one of the largest exposure to those bonds. So uh, let's uh, let's see how this story also, by the way, will progress because uh, you have to understand this. Um, it's the banks who had exposure, but it's people's money. It's people who place money in the banks also. Eh? So what they'll try to do is they'll try to seize the assets and use the assets and sell it so that somehow they get to recoup whatever exposure they had there. So it won't happen overnight. Of course, it will be tied up also. There will be legal proceedings for that up until they get the assets. But uh, if, if they get to recover it, which may also take some time, it allows them to ups- offset any possible losses that are there. But again, that's the risk. Eh? Every time you, uh, every time you invest uh, in in bonds, every time you invest in stocks, it's all dictated by the company. If the company is not doing so well, then there's a big chance also that you don't get paid. So it's not. It's also a misconception that if you invest in bonds, wala na kayo this. Not true. It always goes back to the company that you're buying. And now let's look at RCBC, which has the largest exposure. RCBC, uh, there was support no, at 28 pesos per share. But because of the news last uh, Friday, this was a, it broke out from that level with a large black candle and a heavy amount of volume included in that. By the way, no, it shouldn't also surprise you. Why? Because from a long-term perspective, RCBC is still pretty much bearish. I repeat, from a long-term perspective, RCBC is still pretty much bearish. So if you are a position trader, you could have avoided this whole fiasco by not buying it because the narrative, the main trend is telling you to stay away first because it's still bearish. If you are a quick trader though, you should stay away from the stock primarily because of the breakdown, primarily because it failed to hold at that support level. The next possible support, the next possible landing spot for uh, RCBC will be at 24.5 pesos per share, which I believe is where the next support is. So should uh, should selling continue this Monday, 24.5, 25 will be the next landing spot. And I'll update you, hopefully if it gets requested again, we'll do another video on how low it could possibly go. Guys, please don't bottom pick. Of course, if it's oversold, there will be knee-jerk reactions. And for those who know our technique during oversold levels, you can trade that as well but generally speaking you don't have to risk it there's so many other stocks out there next uh mark horka we've already talked about vita richard madronio uh from macau hello good evening mikey seredrica how about imi is it bullish for the near term jeffrey osuna good evening pabati naman po uh charito saga sa future kuwait so hello to you uh, Joffrey Osuna is a valued commenter from Kuwait. So, good evening. Uh, 
I I I just love I'll, I'll just share this. I just love going to the Middle East because I've been going there since 2014. It's now the sixth year that I or no no sorry I've been going to Qatar uh, 2013. So it's now the seventh year that I've been going to the Middle East. Uh, and then I I'm really see I'm really seeing the heart of the people there that more and more and more Filipinos. I I I think it's still a minority, but we're seeing a larger trend of Filipinos now giving a greater priority on their investment giving a greater priority on their money uh, which is amazing and that's what we want to see we just want to see more and more Filipinos like that and I I hope that uh, there be such an urgency for you guys to really pay attention to your finances uh, put such an urgency that it's it's you loving the process eh? you know all of it you know this trading and investing in the stock market this is not just for me just about making money earning investing trading i'm so in love with the process i'm so in love with with the whole scope of investing and entrepreneurship it's about the game it's about loving the game that uh, whatever earnings it's just a byproduct whoever will fall in love with their craft whatever you get later on will just be a byproduct of that but if money comes or not it doesn't disappoint you because you're not in it for that and if you look at anyone who's been successful from basketball to boxing to entrepreneurship to music those that love their craft so much are the ones that win are the ones that dominate and are the ones that also get rewarded uh, from a monetary perspective please remember money or payment or earnings or revenue is just a byproduct of the amount of skill that you actually deploy and execute so there next uh let's look at let's look at imi first i hope you guys are learning you know, that i try to in i try to integrate stuff that are not just stock market related because what i've realized is this uh financial freedom is just about being good in the stock market eh? it's about you knowing how to hold the money that you have but not just that it's about you creating more and it's about you preserving it that you don't waste the money that you get buying dumb stuff that will deter you and bring you further from financial freedom but if you're the money's there now you're financially free by all means enjoy i'm not saying what you might enjoy what i'm saying is if you know and you know and you know in your heart that you're not yet in financial freedom but if you know and you know in your heart that you're still a great way off use this season of your life to build your assets all right so now i am i uh what's interesting about i am i it's already forming its higher low set at this or this 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 and it's also now starting to break out of certain resistance levels this 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 so what's amazing about that is from a short and a mid-term perspective i am i is pushing up it hasn't fully reversed yet but if you are a quick trader the next resistance that you need to watch out for is around the 12.8 uh, level i believe because of the breakout from 11.2 uh, imi will just continue to break out and your target price will be around 12.8 pesos per share so if the breakout continues it will go to 12.8 if it breaks out of 12.8 it will go to around 14.8 pesos per share but if it breaks out from 13.2 the stock now has reversed from bearish to bullish so what you need to know is from a longer term perspective for you to see that there's a reversal going on it must start to break out of the 13.2 level for you to have the notion that it's now starting to break out failure to break out of 13.2 the stock may retrace downward failure to break out of 12.8 the stock will possibly uh, just move in this direction no? that because it's it's trying to go up we we'll try to do this but failure to do that it will bring it to boom back down to 11.2 pesos per share so if 11.2 does not hold there's a possibility also that it could drop down and because you are a quick trader failure to break out of 12.8 sell you are a quick trader failure to break out of 11.2 sell as well so there next uh Hon Love asking for Dame VUL IRC FNI ATN. Uh, Ray Cutbert Pandres asking for HLCM. So let's look at HLCM first. Uh, HLCM pretty much got battered no, last year. Uh, similar to Semex, so a lot of the cement companies were pretty much battered. For those who've attended our Stock Smart sessions, you know what this means, guys. And you know 
why it's supposed it's supposed to have been uh and you know why why you should have started to avoid the stock as well as it started to progress in that direction so that's what i'm saying for Holcim, it's still in a pretty much strong and long downtrend for Holcim. if you're a position trader no buy signal yet uh for the stock if you are a quick trader though let me zoom in the movement for Holcim is you have a support at around uh you have a support at around 5.8 pesos uh, per share and you have a resistance up around 6.5 so th for those who bought from the bounce of 5.7 please make sure to set your target price at 6.5 pesos per share and please make sure to sell at that level i'll update you over the course of uh, the next few days should there be something that will happen yet but what i know is this position traders trend still down stay away quick traders support is at 5.6 5.7 if you bought from that bounce, make sure to sell if it does not break the 6.5 levels. So there, let's continue. Uh huh. You have uh, Lil Prof Irwin asking for Metrobank. Are you attending Stock Smarts Manila? I remember you messaged me uh, about it. Uh, we've done Metrobank already. Uh, Vince Bantig, who's a valued commenter, asking for Vita. Uh, we did Vita already at the start. Julie Ann Raselis Salazar from Passing. Is asking for double dragon. By the way, you no, know, for those who are asking about double dragon, uh guys, double dragon, by the way, from a position trading standpoint, is similar to Holcim. It's still pretty much uh battered down, it's still pretty much not going good for it. It's been in a very, very solid and steep downtrend ever since it hit 80, ever since it started to reverse down. That's why your goal, you no, know, if you are a person who knows how to follow the charts if it's not working in your perspective then just stay away you don't have to be the one to buy the stock at the lowest possible price because if the trend is still down and the stock is still down it's not gonna go anywhere now from a quick trading standpoint so i'll just make it clear if you are a quick trader uh no buy signal yet if you're a position trader no buy signal if you're a quick trader let me zoom in the stock has started to bounce from the 17.2 support it now already broke out of the 19 peso resistance level it's now headed toward the 22.8 resistance so for those who bought at 7.2 and those who bought at the breakout here at around uh 19 pesos per share the stock will hit and progress and will go to around 22.7 pesos per share for the short term so should double dragon try to go to 22.7 should it try to push up but should it fail to break out from that level, sell. If it breaks out from that, uh, next possible spot for Double Dragon to go is it will try to attack and go for the 24 level. But decision traders stay away. Quick trader, watch out for uh, the 22.8 level. Failure to break out from that, sell. If it breaks out from 22.8, next target price will be 24.6 pesos per share. So I hope, hope you guys are enjoying and I hope you guys appreciate uh, these videos that we're doing you know, and I hope it's something that uh, adds value to you because uh, I don't know what I've what I've realized is it's nice to trade the markets but it's nice to add value to people who are also starting and are in that journey that I hope from the way I do this it helps inspire you that you can actually trade the markets and you can actually win and it can be done that you don't have to be someone who's watching the stock minute by minute please remember remember no if you're watching the stock your stocks minute by minute because you need to not because you want to and if you fail to look at it from a minute to minute level you won't be as effective then it's not investment it becomes a full-time job winning in this is treating it still that it's money working for you if it's you working for it then it's no different from being an employee diba? <laughs> so now uh you have Ian San Miguel. Hola. Uh what's your take on the PSEI Security Bank URC and uh MPI? Then you have Carl Cabansag asking for web, Shell Lumanes asking for JFC MRC, Artemio Haduka asking for MBT. I, I I mentioned MBT already, Edward Arcoy, uh then Edward Bisinga, super, super, super galing na business person, uh Precious Narvaez, uh Mark Arnel Belon, Ron Saco, Jolliver Mapiles from Mapiles Realty. Guys, sobrang galing yan na entrepreneur. Also, Joby Batino from Dubai. 
LJ Santiago CHP still holding. Uh, from a position trading standpoint, no CHP isn't going anywhere yet. Ronnie Marquez from Milan asking for MYPI and Petrol. So let's look at Megawide first. Uh huh. Megawide. There we go. Megawide, no. If you look at it, it has. It, I, I mentioned this in previous videos that it failed to break out of 19.2. There was already hesitation from the start of December that Megawide had a hard time breaking the 19 peso level, the 19.2 peso level. So what does that mean? Because it had a hard time breaking the 19.2 peso level. Uh, sellers dominated. It's a relatively stronger resistance. Because of that, if, because of its failure to break out from that level, you're now seeing it for the past two months start to consolidate already. This is the entire consolidation level for uh, Megawide. No? So I, I believe Megawide now for the short term is just ranging from 17.85 to uh, 19.2. So for the next few months, if it, stays to, if it fails to stay above 17.2, uh, it could drop to around 17.8, it could drop to 17.4, 17.2, but a bounce from 17.8 will bring it all the way and straight up to 19. If it breaks up from 19, you are a position trader, that's when you start to buy. Because at the breakout from 19, the stock now turns from bearish to bullish. So there. Coffee break. One second. Sorry, guys. See, it's as raw as it can be, no? Uh, since I've been talking long, I need to at least refresh for a bit. One, two seconds. Refreshing. Uh, for those who know me also, you know I love uh, coffee. You know that for me, coffee is just pretty much uh, amazing as well. Coffee is something that I don't know uh, brings life to my days. <laughs> Anyways, Petron, uh, Picor. Look at Petron position trading. It's still pretty much bearish. Stay away. You are a position trader. Stay away. Uh, Petron, you are a quick trader. The, the resistance is around 8 pesos per share. I repeat, the resistance is at 8 pesos per share. The short-term support is at 7.6. So for those who bought at the bounce from 7.6, the stock will now try to attack the resistance at 8.05. Failure to break 8.05, take profits. Again, failure to break 8.05, take profits. This is a 5% uh, return because the stock, after failing, if it should it fail to hit this, it will just retrace there, but should it break out, the stock will push further and it will go to around 8.4 pesos per share uh, for the short term. Uh, if you are a quick trader, a breakout from 8 will bring it to 8.4. So something very, very interesting for people who are looking at it from that uh, perspective. Um, next, let's see. Uh, Mini de la Cruz, I've answered Bloom already. Uh, Ruel Hippolito, I've answered uh, some of the context and conditions for uh, for banks. Uh, Amiel Angelito from Cavite. Uh, Im Jomar Villalobos asking for ISM. So I've gotten a lot of messages about ISM as well. Uh, but for ISM, look at this. I'll try to zoom out so you see it from a better context. And uh, I've been using uh, Fibonacci retracements for this because it's a good example. If you look at it, this entire area for uh, ISM, as you've seen it already starting November, it started to consolidate and now the range for ISM will be, the support is at around uh, the support is at around 6.15 pesos per share and the resistance is at 7.2 uh, meaning if it stays around this level, stays above 6.1, 6.2 your target price will be at 7.2 pesos per share but if it fails to hold it could possibly retrace and go down to around 5.4 pesos per share so that's what it is about ISM and if you follow what I've been doing, you know, I've, I'm unemotional to any stock. I'm unattached to any stock. Regardless if it has anything to do with this Latel or the player or whatever you will see there because I'm unattached there. Why am I unattached? Because for me, I just treat the market. I, I'm so in love with the game, but I know that I have to detach myself, detach emotions into it. That if a sell signal will emerge, I remove all my biases and I sell. And I, I hope that you guys also do that. Kevin Malate, uh, I answered a, uh, HLCM. Uh, hello to you guys from Tugegarao. Armi Guita, asking for MBT. Done with MBT. Uh, she's also asking for now. And MPI, where are you from, Armi Guita? Chadler Alejo, uh, good day to you. 
Uh, is there any big cause and effect by hygiene to BDO? Uh, there's an exposure. I think there's an exposure. I don't. I have. I have to still study the 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 big details. But the biggest hit was RCBC. Uh, Julius Antiporda from Tagum asking for CLC. So uh, the context is Jules Antiporda has cash. Uh, he's now thinking if he wants to buy. Sure, she, surely so. Uh, Tan, hello to you. Uh, Asan Tilan from KSA. Ezekiel de los Reyes from Max. So uh, I want to. Sige, let's let's do CLC first. So para tis ni katandem yung uh, ISM nare just to see it in one go. So if you look at it, CLC no, it's pretty much consolidating. Uh, the consolidation range for CLC is st- from November from December it started to consolidate. The entire range that it's been moving is this. Support is at 6.4, resistance is at 7. So now you've seen it this week. One, two, three, four, five. The reason why it's moving down is pretty much because it failed to break out the resistance at seven. So I repeat the reason why uh, you saw it start to go down because it failed to break out from the resistance at seven. Uh, should it continue to go down, I believe it can go back to 6.4 pesos per share, meaning uh, there's a possibility that it will retrace and go back from this level. If it bounces by here, then sell again at seven. For those who took profits at seven, congratulations. That's how you win. And for those who've been following the videos, we made a sell signal for it from a short term perspective as well. So, next, uh, El La Ballet from Baguio, planning to buy GMA7 and watching out for JFC as well. For JFC, no, it's since it's a little JFC, I, I've done a lot of videos also for JFC, so parang I was tra- thinking not to put it here already. So, if you look at it here, uh, this is the breakout point. Eh? Very, 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 very evident breakout point. Because of the breakout point there, and you know, this now becomes the new support level. As long as Jollibee stays above 302, I really believe Jollibee has a shot to go to 350, 360. Of course, as what I've mentioned in the videos, that there will be corrections, there will be areas where people start to sell. But as long as it stays above 302, hmm, Jollibee still has a narrative. To go up further but if it tries to retrace and as it goes to 302 no 302 does not hold better sell better get out because uh the short-term movement will bring it relatively downward also so there yeah. position trading standpoint uh this is if it stays above 302 this is where jolly is and the uptrend hey guys is pretty much intact still but it hinges on jolly staying above the 302 levels Okay, next. Uh you that you wanted to buy off. So that was for CLC. Um, go for that support and resistance level. Uh, Ezekiel de los Reyes asking for max. Uh, let's see. And then let's look at AC for Mas Stephanie Santiago who's from Qatar. So I hope to see you, Mas Stephanie Santiago, when I fly to Qatar in the next few days. So let's look at, what's this? Uh, GMA7. GMA7. Oh, GMA7, amazing. Look, guys, look. Uh, GMA7 just reversed here. It reversed the mid portion of December. Uh, it's now bullish. No? The stock is bullish short, mid, and long term. It also just broke out from this resistance level. So if GMA stays above 5.7, I really believe GMA can now push and go to 6 pesos per share. If you are a position trader, stay positioned. There's no reversal signal yet, I repeat. If you're a position trader, the stock is still bullish, short, mid, and long term. No need to sell. If you are a quick trader, if it stays above 5.7, I believe uh, GMA7 can go to around 6 pesos per share for the short term. And there's no reversal signal yet as of this point in time. <sighs> this is tiring, guys. <laughs> but it's fun. I don't know if you've noticed it. We're now at around, I don't know, we are now doing this video for probably 14 minutes but it doesn't seem like work to me when you find something that you love even if you do it every day you won't get burned out and i say this all the time if you find something that you love you will never work a single day in your life and if you find something that you love and you're learning from it and at the same way you're making a difference that's the best thing that you could ever ever do next ac this is from El Bal. This is from Ma Stephanie Silva Santiago from Qatar. So now, 
why is why did why did AC go down? Failed to break out the 1,000 peso resistance. That's just basically it. The range for AC is resistance is at 1,010, 1,012. Support is around 865. So it's consolidating and moving in that level. A lot of the price and momentum oscillators also are not. Uh, it's not really showing a strong signal that there's a large push up. What I do know is if breaks out from 1,012, you can expect the stock to go uh, bigger, stronger, and higher. So breakout from 112 will bring AC to around 1,095, 1,100 pesos per share for the short term. But if it fails to go that, it can go to around 940 pesos uh, first. So if you're asking to sell, the sell signal if you're a quick trader is around 1,012 because it failed to break out of that. Please remember, no, it's, don't just remember the price points, remember the conditions on why it happened. If you're a position trader, uh, as long as it stays above 940, you can still position from the stock. James Russell from Quezon City. I just mentioned uh, pizza at the start of the video. Uh, Alan Santos, uh, good evening, Kanlubang fans here. Hello, Kanlubang, shout out to you guys. Uh, I mentioned Didi at the start of the video. By the way, if you want to get a recap from this, everything will be in YouTube as well. By the way, guys, please subscribe in YouTube also. Uh, a lot of the videos that are not in Facebook are in YouTube, but a lot of the live videos are here in YouTube. Uh, or in Facebook, I mean. Uh, Imhomar Villalobos uh, asking for ISM. Uh, I mentioned it already. Netski Peski asking for SecB. Romel Hernandez from Doha. There's a lot of people from Doha, no? So exciting. A new exciting lang when I go back to Doha this February. And that's what I like. No? Exciting to travel to Doha and Dubai every time that it's not so hot. By the way, I will be in Dubai also for investing insights with Randall Johnson uh this March naman. Okay, let's do uh let's do MPI naman. Let's do MPI. But, by the way, probably I'll do probably two or three more. So please just comment below uh, if you guys have any more stocks that you want us to analyze. It's almost 10 p.m. here in Manila. Uh, I know it's still afternoon there in Dubai, Doha. It's morning. It's early afternoon in Europe and it's morning for those following me in the States. But for those who are from Sydney and New Zealand, midnight na sa kanila, medyo gabi na rin dito sa Asia. So comment below three or more stocks and let's do it from there. So MPI. Whoa, look at this. Look at this. What a reversal there. Key thing to watch out for for MPI is this. Support is now at around 4.9 pesos per share. Repeat for MPI. Key reversal for MPI will happen if it stays above 4.9 pesos per share. Repeat. A key reversal for MPI will happen if it stays above 4.9. The stock is now bullish for the short, mid, and long term. I repeat, the stock is now bullish for short, for the short, mid, and long term. You're now seeing the lows now start to increase, which is our, which is our characteristic for a stock that is in an uptrend, which is now starting to go and move in an upward direction. So now, if it stays above 4.9, a possible distinct distinction for it is it could possibly move in this direction. If you are a quick trader, possible short-term target price will bring it to five point. Uh, 5.05 but the next one will be around 5.35 pesos per share so uh, key thing that we need to watch out for for MPI is if it fails to break out of the 5.05 5.1 level you may now start to take profits if you're a quick trader if you're a position trader guys the stock just turned bullish and you don't need to sell yet as of this point in time Liza Lee uh, asking for GMA we just did GMA Greg Asilo uh, no one notices Bell. What's your thought on it? Power. Power. Next is you have uh, Oliver Makilang asking for pen. Jairo Serrano asking for CLC. You've done it already. Uh, Marites Siabut de la Cruz asking for AGI and IMI. We did, we did IMI already. Uh, Jen uh, Villaravalo asking for AGI. Michael Calre asking for SSI. John Kunsalan, hello to you from Dubai. Uh, Jerome Bristol, Sir Marvin, I've attended in your seminar last year at Financial Fitness Forum in SMORA. Wow, I hope the seminar uh, would help you. Naman. It's, it's something that helps you, know, or it's something that uh, ha has given you uh, the confidence to trade in the markets. Now, let's look at Bell. 
Tell. Okay. Tell. Uh, position trading. It's still in a downtrend. Avoid. Uh, Bell. Quick trading. It failed to break out of 2.5. If you, you are a person who bought at the support at 2.15 and bought at 2.15, uh, failure to break out from 2.5 this would have given you a 14% profit. So now, for Bell, if it breaks above 2.5, it can attack and go to around 2.9 pesos per share. If it fails to break out from 2.5, no possible trajectory for Bell is it can just go back here to the next uh, support level. Next is, let's look at SSI. By the way, no, SSI has suddenly become, uh, I've been biased about SSI, not as a stock, no, but as a consumer. SSI is bringing Shake Shack, so thank you for bringing Shake Shack. Uh, I'm a big fan of Shake Shack and, uh, and its burgers. Uh, one of the reasons why SSI failed to uh, continue to go down um, at the middle of the week was because it failed to break out from the resistance of 2.5. Uh, there was heavy selling that happened here. Because of the selling that happened here, sellers started to come out. Now the stock will just progress uh, from its failure to break out from the resistance and it will go to around 2.3. So what's the opportunity there? The opportunity there is this. There's a support at 2.3. If the stock bounces from 2.3, your technique, your narrative is to buy. And as the stock bounces from 2.3, it will just go back here, fails to go here, you sell. And that's how you win. That's how you can make money. Uh, this is a 10% 10, 10 trade still. And it's something that if it works for you, then you would go for it. All right. Uh, next, let's look at AGI. AGI, people are asking, should you sell AGI? Uh, not yet. It's just actually reverse though. Uh, Thursday's movement made AGI start to reverse over here. Now, their new support level for AGI is now at 12.3 uh, pesos per share. If 12.3 uh, will hold, uh, I'll remove this first. If, 12 point, if the 12.3 level for AGI will hold, I believe AGI can go for the short term to 13.35 and it can go to 14.55 for the short term. So, quick trader, for those who bought from the breakout of 12.4, 12.5, next target price is 13.35. If it stays above 12.4, AGI, I believe, can go to around 13.35, 13.5 pesos per share. If it fails to break out from that, sell. But if it breaks out from 13.35, adjust. Your next target price will be 14.55. But if it continues to go down and goes to 12.4 and 12.3, 12.4 does not hold. Stay, get away from the stock and start to sell. So there, uh, I guess that's it for now. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot from this. By any means, these are not stock picks. I hope that while I'm doing this, you have your charts open so that as the charts are open, it allows you to be able to, I don't know, uh, have a perspective of, of how I analyze it and so that you also have a reference point. But I don't want you to just follow what I say. I want you to analyze it the way I analyze it. Because at the end of the day, for you to excel in this, it's not about you following what I do, but it's about you learning, practicing, exercising it, and doing it over and over and over again. Because as you do it over and over and over again, that's what will give you the confidence to do with it. And if it gives you the confidence to do it, that's what will help you uh, win in the markets. And, and I, I hope it I hope that you guys execute on the things that we've talked about today because if you don't execute, sayang. And there's so much opportunity out there. There's so much opportunity to create abundance that if you notice it, the way we analyze this is you don't even have to look at the economy, you don't even have to look at the politics of it all. Why? Because what I'm telling you is you allow yourself, you create yourself and you use the stock market to give you the ability to create wealth without you complaining. Don't complain about the economy. Just figure out ways on how you can work around it and make money. It's time that we stop complaining and just stop earning. It's time that we stop comparing and seeing what's happening there and just do it. Just try to win. Just try to push it and try to live your goals and try to reach your goals of financial freedom. 